Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention. And we are talking about the fundamental sources of the failure and in the previous presentation I have talked about the uh, role of the stress raisers in uh, failures and how uh, it is important uh, to consider the stress raisers or take care of them in such a way that uh, the premature failure of the component can be avoided. Uh, today uh, we will be talking about uh, one uh, another fundamental source of the failure which is imperfection in base metal itself, in base metal uh, itself. We know that uh, the components uh, will be made of one or other metal uh, for mechanical applications mostly like these may be in form of iron al alloys or aluminum alloys, magnesium alloys, titanium alloys or there is a huge list of the metals and their alloys which can be used for making the uh, components for mechanical applications. So, um, most of the metals uh, uh, generally possess uh, uh, imperfections of one or other kind. Uh, it is very difficult to have the perfect uh, metallic systems. It, it will have the discontinuity or imperfections of uh, uh, the different kind, uh, whatever is used actually in practice. So, uh, the perfection uh, is uh, almost uh, um, impossible. So, we need to live with the imperfections uh, and these imperfections, there are variety of the imperfections which can be there in metal uh, which range from the crystallographic level, crystallographic level uh, to the micro level and macro level. So, uh, these uh, imperfections uh, uh, according to uh, their level or the form in which they are present uh, can have the different effects on the, uh, the mechanical performance and their tendency to cause the failure. For example, uh, the crystallographic imperfections, no some of these imperfections are favorable and some of these are unfavorable and uh, sometimes these are intentionally induced. Uh, to facilitate some of the mechanical properties. Uh, say uh, crystallographic imperfections may be in form of the vacancies. Uh, vacancies uh, in regular arrangement of the atoms say uh, in a metal which is crystallographic in nature say some of the atoms are missing like uh, atoms are here at these junctions and at one of the locations say if it is missing then that location will be termed as vacancy. So, this is the location where atom is missing. So, this will be a vacancy. Similarly, if one complete plane of the atom is missing. So, here you have this uh, one plane, but here atoms are not present. So, one the plane where these uh, atoms are missing uh, that will be termed as dislocations. So, uh, uh, the vacancy is termed as point uh, imperfection and uh, the dislocation is termed as surface imperfections. Similarly, uh, we have the other volumetric imperfections, but these imperfections are useful also and sometimes uh, uh, and they do not deteriorate the mechanical properties significantly as compared to that of the micro level imperfection. So, if we have to see in this diagram what we can see here, uh, here the various uh, the point defects or the vacancies. Uh, are in form of like vacancy where one uh, atom is missing from the regular arrangement of the atom or some foreign particle or foreign atom has been accommodated in between the regular arrangement of the atom which is like Im interstitial impurity or uh, then we can have like a substitutional impurity where uh, the atom is uh, one foreign atom will be replacing the atom which is 
uh, which was present in the regular uh, arrangement uh, of the uh, crystalline structures. And here, uh, this is uh, the frequent uh, defect where uh, the disordered arrangement of the atoms uh, exist. So, these are the crystallographic imperfections and uh, at the level of the uh, at the mac micro level imperfections, we have uh, some of the defects like uh, uh, some of the elements have localized the presence or absence. So, which uh, is uh, termed as segregation either. So, when they are present in the large amount, we call that things have segregated or they have depleted if they are absent at other location. So, uh, this is one bending is the another micro level defect where certain uh, phases are present in very localized way having a particular pattern. Uh, so, the bending is another defect or uh, the issues may be in form of like say unfavorable, unfavorable uh, the grain orientation, grain orientation. Uh, we know that the mechanical properties of the um, especially deformed components are affected by the way by which grains are oriented in a given metal and if they are oriented uh, in the direction of the loading like this, then the mechanical performance improves. But if the orientation is perpendicular to the direction of the loading, then it will uh, adversely affect the mechanical properties. So, if uh, the, the grains are unfavorably oriented or they have unfavorable uh, geometry. Geometry is unfavorable like high aspect ratio, high aspect ratio Cons constituents present in the uh, metal matrix if they are of the high aspect ratio like this in form of flakes, needles or pit like structures, then uh, they will be uh, providing the easy source of the stress concentration at the particle matrix interfaces, especially near the tip of uh, uh, such kind of the constituents. Like in aluminum silicon alloy, silicon is present in form of the needles in S cast condition. So, the tip of the needle act as a stress razor and that deteriorates the uh, uh, mechanical properties in terms of the ductility and toughness and no sensitivity also improves. So, these are uh, some unfavorable uh, or you can say the micro level imperfections which can adversely affect the mechanical performance and uh, the properties. So, uh, now coming to the macro level imperfections may be in form of like say the cracks are present may be at the surface or below the surface. Uh, so, which will obviously be acting as a source of the stress concentration. Uh, these may be in form of the pores, in form of uh, 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 the inclusions. So, uh, these uh, um, macro level uh, uh, imperfections uh, actually act in two ways. Uh, one is um, that uh, like uh, if uh, either the crack is uh, internal or uh, inclusion is present of a, a particular at a particular location or the big voids are present uh, in form of uh, like this, uh, the pores. So, such kind of uh, um, the imperfections will actually be reducing the load carrying cross sectional area. If you consider for tensile loading, if you consider this section, so here entire cross section is sound and uh, so it the stresses will be less as compared to the case of this section where we have a big void. So, the void will actually this region will not be carrying the load. So, the load resisting cross sectional area is actually uh, reduced when we have macro level imperfections. So, uh, even the nominal stresses uh, are increased uh, primarily due to the reduction in load carrying cross sectional area. This is one aspect uh, that for a given load if the macro size discontinuities and imperfections are present, they will be increasing the even norm, uh, in nominal uh, the stress um, uh, acting on the uh, component which we can say that actual load, load uh, actual load uh, resisting cross sectional area uh, uh, and uh, the load applied. So, the load applied uh, and the actual load resisting cross sectional area will be used for calculating the actual stresses that will be acting. Apart from this uh, 
actual load reduction in actual load resisting cross sectional area uh, due to the presence of these discontinuities. Uh, these uh, discontinuities also act uh, as a stress concerned source of the stress concentration and we know that the geometry, geometry uh, uh, like size and uh, the tip radius of the geometry, uh, such kind of the disc discontinuities uh, radius, tip radius basically of, um, uh, of such discontinuities of such discontinuities uh, did, uh, affects the stress concentration significantly and uh, lower the uh, radius of the uh, tip of the uh, imperfection uh, in form of the crack inclusion or porosity uh, higher will be the stress concentration. So, it increase so such kind of macro level discontinuities will be decreasing um, uh, stress concentration and the load resisting cross sectional areas and so both these aspects will be increasing the tendency for the failure. So, now we will be uh, seeing uh, the like say the uh, as I have explained the uh, if one complete plane of the atom is missing then it will be leading to the dislocations like this this he, this is what has been shown as a edge dislocation. Uh, now, these imperfections may be present in variety of forms like uh, when the metal system is heated the atoms start vibrating or rotation uh, at a high temperature point uh, these imperfections may, may be in form of point defects like uh, the vacancies interstitial is, uh, spaces are filled in by for other foreign particles or substitutional solutes are present. These may be in form of linear defects like a edge and disc screw dislocations and then boundary or surface defects in form of the grain boundaries. Uh, uh, we know the grain boundaries are also um, uh, are for a form of the imperfections because uh, at the grain boundary arrangement of the atom is highly disordered and uh, random. So, it is amorphous actually it is not very uh, order, uh, ordered arrangement. So, this uh, grain boundary area also forms the uh, 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 forms a region of a lot of uh, atomic imperfections and the three dimensional uh, defects may be in form of pores or uh, the amorphous uh, constituents. Uh, uh, it is not always necessary that uh, these imperfections will be unfavorable sometimes these are uh, helpful um, in realizing some of the physical phenomena related with the manufacturing. Uh, for example, um, the vacancies and uh, the atomic uh, level imperfections help in uh, the diffusion of the atoms during the process. So, uh, like lot of metallurgical transformation and the diffusion bonding process all these involve diffusion. So, the vacancies and atomic imperfections um, will be facilitated by the such kind of uh, the imperfections then uh, the presence of the uh, uh, random arrangement of atoms at the grain boundaries. This also helps in uh, uh, increasing the yield strength of the metal uh, because uh, the wherever we have disordered arrangement of the atom dislocations can, can cannot cross that uh, uh, zone easily during the uh, deformation and thereby uh, the yield resistance uh, yield strength of the metal uh, increases. For example, if this is the metal and this is the plane along which slip is taking place uh, on which the dislocations are moving. So, they will be stopped at the boundary because this is the region where very disordered and random arrangement of the atoms exist and so the dislocations are not able to cross the grain boundary area and thereby the presence of the grain boundaries help in improving the strength of the, um, the metals. Uh, uh, in addition to uh, the vacant diffusion and the, the grain boundary formation favorably for uh, increasing the strength, uh, the electrical resistivity, electrical resistivity and the thermal uh, conductivity. We can say that electrical and thermal conductivity is both are influenced by uh, 
uh, by these vacancies and the crystallographic imperfections usually facilitating the movement of the free electrons in the material and if uh, such kind of the movement is restricted then it will be leading to the uh, reduction in the conductivity both in electrical as well as thermal form. So, um, there are number of favorable things related to the imperfections, atomic level imperfections which will be helping uh, to realize uh, many physical phenomena uh, like the diffusion, the flow of current and heat, uh, the, uh, the strengthening of the metal by the grain boundary formation. Uh, as we know that uh, like if we take any metal system like aluminum or iron. So, for enhancing the strength of such kind of metal we add alloying elements may be in form of copper uh, in aluminum may be in form of copper or zinc or magnesium or silicon. Uh, similarly, in case of the steels it is the carbon or nickel or chromium, tungsten, vanadium all these are added for enhancing the property and uh, by controlling the cons concentration of the different elements we try to enhance the, uh, the performance of the uh, iron or magnesium or aluminum based alloys. But it is not just the composition which uh, solely governs the mechanical performance. Um, it also it is also important that uh, it is free from the imperfections both micro and the macro level and in order to uh, uh, the micro level level imperfections uh, which are like in form of the bended structure, segregation, presence or absence of certain alloying element at a particular location or the geometry of the micro constituents which are governing the properties of the the alloy. So, uh, such kind of the imperfections actually not detected using the conventional NDT techniques and therefore, uh, such kind of the imperfections are most of the time overlooked which can lead to the failure of the component during the service because we have a setup for checking the commonly the macro level uh, di discontinuities and imperfections imperfections are detected using the simple uh, the testing and the inspection um, procedures using a DT, NDT etcetera. So, the macro level things are taken care of using NDT and the testing procedures. So, uh, chances will be less for their presence and the, therefore, um, the most of the failures are uh, caused by the technological regions associated with them. Uh, micro level uh, imperfections which are present in form of unfavorable grain orientation, segregation, uh, undesirable grain structure, undesirable phases which are present. So, despite of having the same composition, we may have something else what is not really favorable for performance of the uh, system under the given service conditions and that in turn can lead to the failure. So, uh, uh, so, the macro aspects as I have said are taken care of using the um, using suitable NDT devices, but not the micro aspects. We will be talking about certain uh, micro uh, scopic discontinuities which frequently become the cause of the failure. Uh, these may be in form of like uh, the dissolved gases, uh, presence of the dissolved gases. Uh, in the base metal in form of hydrogen, nitrogen and oxygen. So, these gases will either be forming their oxides, nitrites or hydrides or these will be acting as a pores or these will be uh, uh, also acting as like hydrogen in a steel sector as a, a source of the um, cold cracking or the delayed cracking. Similarly, the formation of such oxides, nitrides, slags or sulphides uh, will be uh, present uh, in form of the inclusions or metallic continuity and thereby uh, becoming the source of the nucleation for the cracks under the uh, cracks and white formation under the influence of the external loading. Uh, similarly, high aspect ratio constituents like flakes, needles etcetera uh, and the platelets etcetera act as a, a, a source of the stress concentration especially at the particle matrix interfaces and thereby they provide easy site for the nucleation of the whites and cracks. Uh, chemical heterogeneity uh, is about uh, the presence or absence of certain uh, things at a one location and which will be leading to the 
uh, heterogeneity in mechanical lower properties as well as increased chances for the uh, corrosion because the uh, the varying compositions uh, and the difference in the the phases which will be formed due to the uh, chemical heterogeneity that will be leading to the um, uh, uh, formation of the galvanic cell e cells easily and that will promote the corrosion also so uh, heter chemical heterogeneity in form of segregation or selective depletion of the elements can adversely affect the mechanical properties as well as uh, the corrosion resistance. Similarly, the varying uh, metallurgical structures due to the uh, uh, different thermal cycles and deformations experienced during the metal processing for manufacturing uh, like uh, the rolling or the casting that also uh, leads to the, uh, the heterogeneity in terms of the mechanical properties across the section and that uh, under the unfavorable service conditions can become the source of uh, the fail failure. Uh, then unfavorable uh, morphologies uh, like uh, uh, morphology is about the size and shape of the micro constituents. So, if they are in form of like the banded structure or laminates, plates, needles etcetera, then these will provide the easy source for the failure. Uh, coming to the macroscopic features which are normally present in the uh, in the base metals like the base metals are normally produced through the two roots one is our uh, uh, as cast uh, things in form of the ingots or the billets or uh, these are further rolled down to the thinner sections like plates, sheets, etc. So, um, either as cast components or the uh, forged or the rolled components, so the deformed components we can say. Uh, so, when the things are produced, base metal is produced by the casting only, then uh, we may have the defects uh, uh, in the cast. Uh, base metal in form of cold shards, inclusions, pores, uh, shrinkage voids etcetera. So, uh, if the base metal is having these discontinuities then uh, in manufactured product these discontinuities can become the source of the fracture or the failure. Similarly, in the forced components uh, uh, thus the base metal produced by the deformation based processes like forging or uh, the rolling then, uh, then we may have the defects like laps, seams, shrinkage. Uh, cavities and uh, the flow line patterns, unfavorable flow line patterns and which may provide easy source for the uh, nucleation of the whites and cracks under the uh, influence of the external loading. So, these features uh, if they are left in the base metal due to the improper quality control then uh, this will be leading to the um, presence of this uh, defects in at the either at the surface in form of cracks, open holes, blisters, slaps etcetera or the subsurface defects like blow holes, pores, piping defects, cold shots and lack of penetration in, in the subsurface zone. Uh, and whenever these are present as I have explained just now, whenever these discontinuities especially the macro level discontinuities are present, these will be uh, affecting the performance of the component uh, under the external loading conditions in two ways. One either these will be acting as a source of stress concentration and second they will be reducing the load resisting cross sectional area and both the cases the stress magnitude acting around these uh, nearby these uh, um, discontinuities uh, that they will be increasing. So, stress magnitude uh, nearby the discontinuities will be increasing and which in turn will be promoting the tendency for the failure. And, uh, so, uh, most of the macro discontinuities increase the maximum stresses uh, much higher than the nominal stress uh, due to both of our factors. So, uh, um, as I have explained the while well, the micro discontinuities uh, primarily lead to the varying mechanical properties. Uh, uh, reduce the tolerance to the crack nucleation uh, sources of the stress concentration, delayed cracking in form if the hydrogen gas is uh, uh, present in the steels and reduce corrosion resistance. So, the implications of the micro level discontinuities I have already explained either these can act as is variation in mechanical properties due to the metallurgical homogeneity and uh, chemical homogeneity, metallurgical heterogeneity or uh, the chemical heterogeneity. These can also 
also uh, which can lead to the either very soft uh, uh, formation of soft zone or hard zone. If the hard zone is formed then this will be reducing to this will be reducing the tolerance to the crack nucleation. These can also act as a stress raisers in form of um, if they are present in form of the bandage structures, needles and the laminates and the delayed cracking is observed if the hydrogen is dissolved in steel and uh, due to the chemical heterogeneity uh, um, there may be increased uh, possibility for the galvanic cell formation which in turn will be reducing the corrosion resistance. Now there is one uh, case study, yeah. now there is one case study uh, related with the uh, metallurgical heterogeneity and how the failure is uh, caused. Um, in this particular case the failure of uh, case study of uh, failure of the forged connecting rod is presented. Say the connecting rod was made of the uh, medium carbon steel and uh, the failed steel uh, and the failed rod composition when uh, analyzed uh, using the spectroscopy was found within the limit. So, composition of the failed connecting rod was found within the limits and the microscopic studies showed that there was no metallurgical imperfection in, in form of uh, uh, like segregation or uh, like that then uh, it was found that uh, uh, the hardness of the, the connecting rod was uh, 140 BHEN in, in place of the recommended value of 160 to 205. BHN. Metallography of unused showed the homogeneous perlite uh, with the equal amount of the ferrite and perlite which shows that uh, the proper heat treatment was uh, carried out. But the failed one, uh, so this was the, uh, the met proper metallography showed that uh, of the unused means unfailed connecting rod showed that uh, the structure was perlitic uh, and uh, perlitic and ferritic with equal amount of the both perlite perlite and ferrite and which uh, is suggesting that proper heat heat treatment was carried out and the failed one showed the banded structure near the feed marks so here uh, this was basically the connecting rod which failed from this particular location and it this its cross section is shown here which is suggesting um, that the crack nucleated somewhere here and uh, uh, the microscopy of uh, the the unused unfilled component showed that uh, it had uh, the ferritic and perlitic structure with approximately equal amount of the ferrite and the perlite. So, the fracture uh, and while the failed one showed the banded structure where the bands of the ferrite like this white uh, or light etched zone is showing the um, uh, bands of the ferrite. So, since the ferrite is weaker than the perlite, so under the uh, if these uh, uh, kind this kind of the banded structures fall in the zone of the high stress areas, then these easily provide uh, the uh, source of the stress concentration, source of weakness and where from cracks can easily nucleate. So, in this particular case this region where from fracture took place actually was subjected to the rough grinding and at the same time this also had uh, the banded structure and this area was uh, falling under the high stress zone conditions. So, these conditions led to the easy nucleation of the cracks uh, uh, in this areas and uh, subsequently the growth and here the beach marks in the failed component is suggesting the um, the fatigue, the failure uh, or the fracture of the connecting rod by the fatigue. So, the fracture uh, uh, from the transition in the cross section was observed, beach marks indicated that fatigue fracture with a smooth uh, region of the crack nucleation. So, this region which is the smoother one indicating the location where from it has initiated and then the direction in which it has grown subsequently and um, no plastic deformation also suggests the typical conditions uh, corresponding to the fatigue fracture and DPT uh, means dye penetrant test of the uh, uh, location near the fracture surface showed that few um, fatigue cracks were present uh, and uh, nearby uh, those locations also the rough ground feed marks were also observed. So, uh, you see the presence of the rough ground feed marks and the bended structure and somewhat lower 
hardness um, in high uh, lower hardness especially in high stress areas led to the nucleation and the growth of the frac uh, growth of uh, nucleation and growth of the crack which subsequently led to the fracture by the fatigue so no sensitivity due to the banded structure in high stress areas rough ground marks uh, act as a stress razor, low hardness um, resulted in the fatigue fracture of the connecting rod. So, recommendation was to control the microstructure properly so that the banded structures can be avoided and hardness can be maintained within the specified limit of 160, uh, 160 to 205. Uh, BHN and the surface finish is also maintained properly instead of forming that rough ground feed marks especially in high stress areas. So, these uh, uh, were the recommendations in order to avoid the failure of the connecting rod um, due to the fatigue. Uh, so, now I will uh, conclude this presentation. In this presentation basically I have talked about the importance of the imperfections, crystallographic imperfections sometimes favorable, but the micro and macro level imperfections are unfavorable and most of the time these act as a source of the failure. Thank you for your attention.